Well, hello everybody. Once more, welcome to the to our discussions on the experimental determination of flow patterns and void fraction. We were discussing, if you recall, we were discussing the impedance probe technique, where uh, the uh, the void fraction or the distribution of the two phases they are determined based on the difference in either the electrical conductivity of the two phases or the electrical capacitance of the two phases. And we had discussed the advantages of the impedance technique. And also I had told you that for microsystems, usually arc electrode probes they are used, where in this particular case you can see the arc electrode probe is of this particular design which are used in macro systems. And for this arc electrode probes, we find that um, uh, based on electrostatics, the following derivation can be done from which we can find out a relationship between void fraction and admittance for two different cases. One is dispersion of gas bubbles in liquid and the other is liquid droplets in the gas. For any other sort of distribution, the mathematical derivation has not been done in that way and we know very well that none of these distributions are applicable for microsystems. So, therefore, um, what is usually done is as we were discussing, generally since nothing intrusive can be done here. So, although a large number of varieties of probe designs are available while uh, the in macro systems namely the um, grid electrode probes, the point electrode probes, but usually the area average arc electrode or a modified version of arc electrode probes are usually used. And I had already discussed this particular design of the probe. Now, since these things were not very available, so usually apart from the raw signals people usually have performed the probability density function analysis of the random signals. Now, as I had already discussed or the curves generated or the probability density function curves obtained from an optical probe and at that time I had told you that I will be discussing what a PDA for a probability density function is after some time. So, in this particular case I would like to discuss this before discussing the PDF curves generated from the random signals. Now, the PDF curves they are nothing but the smoothed out version of a histogram which depicts the distribution of amplitude of the random signals. And the time interval over which the signal is recorded, it influences the nature of the PDF. For example, suppose you are recording, it is quite evident, suppose you are recording the signal for a very short while. Okay. Suppose it is slack flow and you are recording the signal for such a short while that it just can capture the situation where the Taylor bubble is traversing the, uh, the optical probe or the impedance probe whatever. So, from that particular signal if you want to derive some information it will appear that it was actually annular flow with a continuous gas core and maybe some amount of liquid film. Okay. Or in other words, if the recording is so very less or rather the recording time is so very less that just the liquid slug is captured or maybe you have captured 5 liquid slugs and maybe the 3 short tailor uh, sorry 4 short tailor bubbles, then it may appear that either only liquid was flowing or maybe it was a bubbly flow pattern. So, therefore, in order to obtain a proper rather a proper idea a proper appraisal of the flow situation, it is very important to see that the time of recording is quite high. And uh, so, this particular the, this influences the probability density function curves and so therefore, either the recording is done over a large amount of time or in other words large number of recordings are done and all of them are averaged properly in order to obtain a reliable probability density function curve. And uh, it is quite obvious that therefore, a constant and if we record it for a very long period, then naturally we will get the nature of the curve which will be which will not anymore depend upon the period or the time of recording. It is quite natural. If we record the signal for such amount of time, 
which is larger than the fluctuations in the flow signal, then naturally what we get? We get a stationary PDF. For example, in the for the bubbly flow, we would get one a, a unimodal PDF with a large voltage rather with a large peak at either a low voltage or a high voltage depending upon what type of circuit and what type of measurement technique we have taken. If during water flow the output is a low voltage, then for bubbly flow we will be getting a unimodal peak at low voltage. If during water flow we get a high voltage peak, then for bubbly flow the unimodal peak will be obtained at high voltage. Just the reverse happens for annular flow. And if we are taking the signal for a very large amount of time, then we will find that we can differentiate between wispy annular flow and liquid ring flow and slug flow and maybe dispersed flow, because all of them for all these signals there will be some particular differences in the PDF curves. It can be either in the mean value or it can be in the in the uh, Devi standard deviation or the spread of the PDF curve. So, depending upon all these things, we are going to get different curves for different flow patterns as we have already seen for the case of optical probes. And uh, usually the, um, these, uh, the moments of the PDF curves, their number one is the mean value of the signal which gives you a rough idea regarding the average proportion of the two phases. And of course, it th th this is the derivation or rather this is the expression I should say of the standard deviation of the signal. And the nature of the peakedness of the or the nature of the spread can be obtained from the skewness or the kurtosis. Now, let us see what are the different type of signals which had been obtained by Paranjape et al for the different flow situations they had encountered in a micro channel. Quite naturally, we would observe that the, the, from the, uh, the just a direct visualization of the raw signals, it was always not possible to differentiate the flow patterns. If you observe this particular signal and this particular signal, just from the basic appearance it appears that they might be something similar. And we find that a better appraisal of the flow situation was obtained once the probability density function curves were taken. What do we observe in this particular case? Just like the optical probe case, we observed that for bubbly flow, we have we have obtained a peak at a larger value of voltage, right? Quite naturally, because when water is flowing, then the circuit, then uh, the the the, the, uh, the the circuit it yields a higher voltage. So therefore, for bubbly flow, we have obtained a unimodal peak at a higher voltage, and there's a small spread in it. From bubbly flow, as the bubbles start becoming slightly larger and they form this cap shaped, very interestingly, in both the cases, water is the continuous phase. And therefore, the, the, the peak occurs at more or less a high voltage. The peak from bubbly to cap bubbly flow has shifted slightly to lower voltage. But more importantly, we find that the peak in this case is bimodal unlike the unimodal peak we have observed here. So, this shows that the cap bubbles are traversing the flow passage at, at a frequency and a size large enough to make an independent presence. So, therefore, we find that a bimodal peak with considerable spread marks the termination of bubbly flow and the onset of the periodic flow appearance. Now, again if in case the gas velocity is increased, we find that the cap bubbles they start becoming longer and longer and they form slug flow. In this particular case also there is an uni sorry a bimodal peak, but it is quite natural that the peaks are much more further apart. In fact, the second peak is not very evident in this particular case, it occurs very close to one. So, this shows that the 
slugs have firstly increased in length it is quite evident and the first peak it has shifted to much lower voltages indicating the greater residence time of the slugs in this case. It also indicates shorter liquid plugs and but more or less the bimodality being retained shows that both of them denote the periodic flow pattern. From here once we go to the slug I should say it is the slug annular transition which people have called as the churn turbulent transition. If you, if you observe the raw signals you find that it is extremely erratic and if you observe the probability density function you find that in this particular case the two peaks are not evident the entire output the curve appears to be a single spread out curve with a large value of skewness and there is no definite peak, but it is a spread out phenomena at a higher voltage. And as this particular uh, the um, gas slugs they start coalescing with one another to form long slugs till now let me tell you the annular flow has not appeared this results have been taken in a typical micro channel of some micrometer dimension. So, therefore, bubbly was obtained even if you observe the bubbly flow pattern you will find that they are more or less disc shaped large bubbles and we have not observed although this appears to be an annular flow pattern there has been some bridging at some particular point. So, therefore, in this particular case what do we have? We definitely have a unimodal peak. The unimodal peak is at a lower voltage that is also true. And we also see that there is a large spread out portion which shows the presence of occasional liquid bridging in this particular case. So, therefore, in this particular case the thing which we obtain is we find that for the case of long slugs we have a spread out peak. So, although just from the basic appearance it is very difficult to differentiate between the, the different flow patterns, but from the probability density function analysis we are able to do the same right. Now, there was another type of impedance probe which was also adopted in literature. Well, I have represented this particular probe in that this was used by the uh, second group of researchers that I have mentioned. In this particular probe it is very interesting here what they have they have got two electrodes which are flush mounted to the two walls which more or less it signifies or rather it is sort of the arc electrode probe which is used for micro uh, sorry macro systems. In this particular case what do we have there are Heli, this is a helical electrode configuration, where if you observe one particular electrode it is wound like a helix on the conduit and the other electrode is also wound like a helix which is opposite to the first electrode. And along with that there is a shield electrode between the two. This particular shield electrode it fixes the stray capacitance and makes an analytical approach of the helical cross capacitor possible. And we find that at both the ends there are guard electrodes. If you observe at the two ends there are the guard electrodes. This guard electrodes are placed to render edge effects negligible as I have already discussed for the case of macro systems. The guard electrodes are connected electrically to the two shield electrodes. So, therefore, in this particular case we find that the design is a bit more involved in this particular case and the results or the output from the measurements of the flowing current between electrode 1 and electrode 2 have been depicted in this particular signal. Well, here of course, they have used the same uh, probe 
for a large test section as well as for a, a smaller test section definitely it is a mini channel. So, therefore, stratification occurs here. So, if you observe the signals then in that case we will find that it gives you for smooth stratified quite expectedly it gives you an almost straight line. The plug and slug flows they are very evident from the intermittent nature which shows the Taylor bubbles and the liquid slugs and for the semi annular case we find that it gives a small fluctuating signal at a low value of voltage which signifies a continuous gas core and slight deviations due to the presence of small amount of waviness in the interface of the liquid film and the gas core. Now, let me tell you one thing that this was used for two particular dimensions where one was a macro system, the other was, was a milli system. Now, in both of these as we have already seen the patterns were morphologically the same. There were slight differences which could be captured by the probe, but we are as yet not sure how well this particular probe would be performing for a micro channel where the entire distribution was different variations of slug and we would have to capture the differences between the slug as has been done by the modified version of the arc electrode probe. This could capture the variations between cap bubbly slug etcetera particularly after the probability density function analysis was performed. Uh, this particular slide it gives us a very good idea or an objective idea regarding the distribution of the two phases in a mini channel and a macro system. If you observe the annular or the semi annular flow pattern just by comparing the two signals it is automatically evident that the amount of interfacial waviness is less here it is much higher here. Then if you compare the slugs in these two particular cases, you find that the slug flow pattern is marked by a greater amount of disturbance as compared to the slug flow pattern here. In this particular case more or less we have straight more or less we have peaks and we have got straight valleys, while in this particular case we hardly have any straight valleys. The primary reason being the aerated slug liquid slugs in this case and the unaerated liquid slugs in this particular case. So, therefore, we from here we find that as far as micro channels are concerned for the measurement of flow patterns the most widespread technique is the flow visualization and photographic techniques accompanied by suitable image analysis of the different techniques or rather sorry of the different images. Few researchers have attempted to develop an objective flow pattern indicator either by using the optical probe method or by using the capacitance technique. Now, remember one thing whenever they had used even the optical probe the intensity of the incident laser had to be much less and for the capacitance probe also although conductivity probe is more popular for macro systems, but in micro systems usually the capacitance probe has been used. And we have also seen that the probability density function analysis has led to an enhancement of the amount of useful information that can be obtained from this measurement device. Now, at this particular juncture I would also like to tell you regarding a brief idea about the void fraction measurements right. Now, flow pattern estimation means nothing but measuring the distribution of the voids right, but if, if we want to find out any useful property of the uh, two phase mixture say it is uh, two phase uh, your uh, two phase density or the pressure drop we would want to have apart from the distribution of voids we would like to have the average void fraction. Now, 
how can we measure this? The common, the most common technique to measure void fraction is for macro systems is typically the quick closing valve technique. What does the quick closing valve technique do? Let us say it is the simplest technique. Simply in the flow passage, we have two ball valves or two quick closing valves located at the two ends. When we have ensured that the flow is fully developed, steady state, simply at the two valves are closed simultaneously at one particular instant and the two phases are trapped between the two valves. The trapped two phase mixture is then separated out or it separates by gravity and the volume fraction of each is noted to find out the void fraction of the flowing two phase mixture. This is the most common and the most reliable technique for macro systems and any other most sophisticated techniques which are much more popular say the radi radioactive absorption and scattering techniques or the impedance techniques the all of these have to be calibrated with the volume measurement technique or the quick closing valve technique in order to obtain a reliable estimation. Unfortunately or fortunately the quick closing valve technique cannot be used for micro systems. Firstly there are some fabrication problems you cannot fit two valves and all those things that is definitely there. But more importantly we find leave alone micro channels even if you are dealing with milli channels also we find that the two phases do not separate by gravity. Even if you are working with a air water system also they do not separate by gravity on simultaneous closure of the valves. This is evident in this particular slide this is again taken from the um, uh, from some of the experiments performed in the multiphase flow laboratory of the chemical engineering department. We find that we have been working with a 4 millimeters and a 2 millimeters tube on simultaneous closure of the two valves. The two phases do not undergo gravity separation rather one of the, the gas phase it remains as stationary flux in the continuous liquid phase. So, therefore, in order to find out the void fraction in this case also along with quick closing valve technique the photography technique and image analysis had to be performed. So, therefore, the we find that the basic technique which is used for macro systems is not suitable for micro systems. Definitely the, the quick closing valve techniques has got a large number of problems even in macro systems. We are not going to discuss them because it is not applicable for micro systems. So, there is no point in wasting our time over it. So, as a result what we find is that in order to measure the void fraction we have to take resort of the techniques which we have already discussed. But let me tell you till now the majority of the researchers who have worked or rather who have experimented with the void or rather who have tried to estimate the void fraction they have used the photographic and the image analysis technique. The radioactive sc uh, scattering technique which is very popular for macro systems have not been used with much success in the micro systems. The reasons are firstly the radiation amount or the incident radiation has to be of sufficient low intensity in order to measure the amount attenuated by the two phase mixture. The volume of the two phase mixture is so less that the amount of attenuation will be very less and from here it is it is very evident that the, the measured intensity as a function of initial intensity this particular ratio will be quite large because the linear absorption coefficient as well as the z the actual distance of travel of this particular radiation both of them being very small. So, therefore, I by I 0 will almost be equal to 1. 
So, therefore, it is uh, it is very difficult to measure such a small amount of uh, intensity which has been absorbed. And the other thing is we find out that well, um, so for that particular reason and when, when the amount of amount which has been absorbed or attenuated is so small, then naturally the uncertainty or the error associated with the measurement also becomes very large. This is number 1. So, radiation absorption cannot be used or it is not, it is very difficult to use this radiation absorption in micro channels. Now, about the impedance probe techniques. The impedance probe what do we find? We find that as I have already mentioned the relationship between uh, uh, impedance and void fraction that is a very sensitive function of flow pattern and unless we know flow pattern it is very difficult to obtain an idea regarding the interfacial distribution. And as I have already said that estimating flow pattern itself is not very easy. Fabricating of probes for a micro channel that is also very difficult. So, with all and the other important thing is we have to remember that in order to obtain a an accurate quantitative estimation of void fraction using the impedance probe, it is very important that we have an accurate estimation of the conductivity of the liquid phase and the gas phase. And since the conductivity changes with a large number of parameters, it is very difficult to obtain a proper estimate. The other thing is, if we have to obtain a proper estimate of the void fraction, it is important that we have an a priori knowledge of flow pattern and this itself is difficult for micro channels. So, with this I end my discussion on the experimental techniques of determining void fraction and the flow patterns or the distribution of the voids, we find that all said and done we still rely on visualization techniques including photography and associated image analysis both for estimation of flow patterns as well as estimation of void fraction. In the next class, we will first be discussing regarding the uh, influence of several operating parameters on the distribution of the two phases and then we will shift over to the discussion of the variation of void fraction with different input parameters. Thank you very much.